WWE's latest signing, Stephanie Vecker, has made her debut this coming just a few days after the news broke that she had indeed signed with the company over All Elite Wrestling. We're going to talk about all the updates in between, everything you need to know about the situation, and what could be next for one of WWE's arguably most important international signings in a while. We're also going to give you a massive contract update as there has been a re-signing. A WWE veteran has re-signed with the company. It's a pretty big name. We're going to get right into it. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. So, Stephanie Vacker made her WWE in-ring debut this past, actually yesterday, I was going to say this past week, but it was literally just yesterday in Mexico City. Mexico was the next touring destination for WWE. There were They were building up this, this, you know, momentum going into the tour with obviously signing one of Mexico's biggest stars in Stephanie Valker. She had spent a lot of time in uh, CMLL. She was the CMLL Women's Champion. We'll get into who won that belt, ironically enough, uh, just this past, actually yesterday again. I keep saying this past, but it'd be like that. Um, but getting back to, to it, she faced off against Isla Dawn in Mexico City. The videos that we are seeing show much fanfare. She is lauded as this massive star. And WWE have been going out of their way on social media and across platforms to show that this is not just another run-of-the-mill, you know, free agent signing. There's someone they're going to bring into the Performance Center or whatever. Stephanie Vucker is someone who they have big plans for. And the presentation, the way that they have been playing this up, all of that really points to that fact. And this tour in Mexico really was I think, boosted very much so by her signing with the company. So I think that when you have that and you have these ongoing reports and discussions within WWE that they really want to break into Mexico. Like, there are talks about this partnership potentially with AAA. There's talks about Triple H himself really wanting to hone in on that market. And, and the company itself wants to start building roots in that market. And they're already doing that. They had AJ Styles appear in Pro Wrestling Noah. They have had, you know... People all around, like Julia, who's in a weird situation where he's like she's wrapping up dates, like she was at that that Marigold show. So like it, it's there's a lot happening in wrestling, and WWE it seems wants to be a part of this Forbidden Door international wrestling conversation. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. The main reason they want to do it is because they believe that the best way for them right now to make a foothold in all of these different markets is to use companies that people have established trust with and credibility with. And once you have that, and once you're able to highlight your stars in that way, it's easier for WWE to then come around and say like, wait, okay, next tour, you know, we'll have some of your guys on, it'll help. And over time, then WWE will really be able to establish their own, you know, uh, footprint and their own commercialized mechanisms within those markets. That's like what I think this is all building towards. And when you take into account that like they are doing or they are trying to do what AEW was actually ahead of them of in in recent years, like it, it, it is, it shows you that the difference between the Vince McMahon era and the Triple H era in the way that they view wrestling in general and the way they view this global market of professional wrestling is completely different on one end you had Vince McMahon who could not give less of a shit about what the hell New Japan was he probably didn't even know what pro wrestling Noah was to be honest with you and and on the other side you have Triple H who you know reportedly watches everything he watches like everything he keeps up with everything he has William Regal who's one of you know their biggest scouts like who is really actually watching everything and I think like with that and with that appreciation and, and understanding of what else is going on around the world, you see the desire for WWE in, in many ways to catch up and to want these international stars. Like Stephanie Vacker, the way that she has been presented has been that of a massive free agent signing. 
and the PR machine, all that kind of stuff is behind her and it's working. And when you when you think about like the fact that, you know, she had offers on the table, right? She had offers from AEW, she had an offer from AEW, she had an offer from WWE. WWE apparently upped their offer according to reports when they found out that AEW had also made an offer, but if reports are to be believed, Stephanie Rucker really wanted to go to WWE and she never seriously considered AEW. Again, take that with a bit of a grain of salt, but at the end of the day, she's in WWE. I think she's going to be doing I, I think the the point or the feud that makes most sense for her is for her to go and do a women's world championship feud, or sorry, an NXT women's championship feud with Roxanne Perez. I think that is where you go. I think that there, like, if you want to build her up to be as big as possible, to be this this massive signing, to make an impact right off the bat, have her go in, beat Roxanne. Roxanne goes up to the main roster, and then I think you have Stephanie Vecker, like, establish herself there in NXT for a bit. And then I, it's, it's going to be in no time by the time she's up to the main roster. Like, she, the way that, that, Go if you haven't seen any match she's done, like go watch the match she had with Mercedes at Forbidden Door. Enough said. She's a star. She's great in the ring. She understands like how to get like it's something that is a big criticism of international stars or whatever. She understands how to find the hard camp. She understands how to play up to the crowd. She understands how to to do a match for television. And that is something that WWE, I'm sure, very much appreciates. And that's something that I think has played a Big role into why she ended up being signed by the company. Uh, interesting news, though, is that her CMLL Women's Championship that actually was stripped and, and vacated because uh, she left the company was picked up by Willow Nightingale, of uh, an AEW talent. So the CMLL-AEW relationship seems to be continuing and, and growing stronger despite this. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks, months, and years, maybe, with this situation but guys let me know what you think about this let me know in the comments section as we move on to our next topic let's talk about natalia re-signing with the wwe yes 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 fightfulselect.com has reported that natalia has signed a multi-year extension with wwe and that the contract was agreed to back in late june and if we want to take a look at some additional notes from the report. Here is an aggregation from Wrestle Purist. Natalia had interest outside of WWE, but most companies expected her to stay with WWE. Sorry for the typo there. There was also interest in TJ Wilson as a producer in multiple companies. WWE learned that losing Natalia was a real possibility and wanted to get her signed long term before she hit free agency. So, for all the speculation, hullabaloo, hoopla, the WWE wanted to make sure that she did not hit free agency. And in, in many ways, this is interesting, right? Because Natalia is obviously one of WWE's most tenured stars in general. She is a stalwart of the women's division. She is a veteran. Like She's someone who could very easily, whenever she wanted to, make that transition into being a producer. And I don't think she's slowing down. That's not me saying she's retiring or anything. But she could make that transition into being a producer or a trainer and be extremely good at that. But this, I, I think, kind of shows you in a weird way, like, this trend we've been seeing with WWE and how they've been letting contracts come up very, very late in the game. And, you know... I think one of these times it is, I'm not going to say come back to bite WWE, but I think the strategy of waiting until the very last possible moment, while it is good for the talent and I'm, I am all for the talent getting their back. Like if you could hold leverage over WWE or AEW, whoever do it, because the reality is you only get one career and it could be over in an instant. You never know what's going to happen in your next match. You never know what match is going to be your last. So as long as you can make money, as long as you can get your bread, as long as you can get that money up, not your funny up, do it. So with the net, but like, I think this is like maybe a case of WWE realized like, okay, wait, Natalia, Owen Hart Cup. No, 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 we can't, we can't let her go. 
And uh, and again, that's like a little bit of a simple oversimplification probably, but reality is like they don't want some of their big names going to AEW. Like that is just the truth of it. And if they have control over that, if they can offer something to re-sign that talent and keep them from there, they will try to do it uh, to the best of their ability. And but I think over time, like what you're going to see is the more you put talent into a situation where they have that option, well, hey, like you haven't offered me anything yet. My contract's up in a week. Let me see what AEW is offering. Let me see like how big that offer could be. Let me see what other opportunities are out there. That is going to be something that WWE needs to reckon with. And that's why I think this system of like, Waiting until the last possible moment. We, we've seen this time and time again. We saw it with Rollins. We saw it with McIntyre. We saw it with Priest. We saw it with Dominic Mysterio. We saw it with Finn Balor. And it has played out well for them. We saw it with Gable. It's played out well for them so far. But at the same time, one of these days, it is going to happen. You're going to see like someone be like, let me, let me, give me a sec. And we've already seen Ricochet, whose contract was up. And he said like, yeah, don't want to resign. Like, it's going to be interesting. And, and that's the whole point of having another wrestling company, like a big-time wrestling company that's able to offer talent, like, more money. It makes, like, the unpredictability of wrestling fun for the fans. I think one of the one of the best parts of having multiple companies that have the ability to pay talent a lot of money and, and, and bid for these big talent is that unpredictability factor. That's what a lot of what made early AEW so special because you never knew who was going to come in next. And I think that now that WWE is also doing that, it's made that product more exciting. And I think we're going to see it back and forth. A lot of contracts coming up over the next year and a lot of big name contracts coming up over the next year. We'll see what happens though. But Natalia, for matter of fact, is staying put in WWE. Let me know what you guys think about this re-signing. Let me know what you think about Stephanie Vaker being positioned, at least right for right now, as a big star for the company and massive free agent signing. And let me know what else you guys want me to talk about in a future video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real.